Let's talk about the effects of strokes in various regions of the brain. You got a great table in the book organized by anatomical location, so whether it's in the anterior or posterior circulation or the communicating arteries. Now each important vessel is listed on the left with the detail about what the effects of the stroke would be on the right. But keep in mind that test questions will be more likely to give you the symptoms and then you'll need to sort those into one or multiple anatomic regions. Um, and this is similar to what you have to do on the wards, either on your rotations or if you become a neurologist. So let's start with the anterior circulation. The MCA, or middle cerebral artery, as we mentioned, supplies the lateral brain. So the motor and sensory cortices will be affected along with Wernicke's area and Broca's area. This will give you contralateral paralysis and numbness in the face and upper limbs. You will also potentially see hemineglect. So the ACA is actually medial. And so with this, you will have effects on the motor and sensory cortices that supply the lower limb. And again, you'll see contralateral paralysis and numbness. Last on the anterior circulation is the lenticulostriate artery. This can be really critical. It is a smaller branch of the MCA. So you know, think of it as coming off of the MCA, but it's a common location for lacunar infarcts. These are infarcts that occur secondary to hypertension. Now, because this vessel supplies the striatum and internal capsule, you can have severe hemiparesis as well as hemiplegia. It is noteworthy that lacunar strokes can occur in other deep brain structures as well. And as with most of the things we've discussed, where it occurs will determine what the symptoms are. Now we'll move on to the posterior circulation where we encounter the medial and lateral medullary syndromes. The medial medullary syndrome is caused by a lesion in the anterior spinal artery or ASA, which runs down medially and ventrally. Infarction of the ASA affects the corticospinal tracts before they decussate in the medullary pyramids, the medial lemniscus as it travels from the spinal cord to the thalamus, and cranial nerve 12. So, what would we expect from damage to, again, corticospinal tract, medial lemniscus, and cranial nerve 12? What we'd see is contralateral hemiparesis, impaired contralateral proprioception, and ipsilateral paralysis of the tongue. And keep in mind that the tongue deviates to the side of the lesion. And this can help you localize the lesion to a specific hemisphere. Now strokes in the posterior inferior cerebellar artery or pica are known as either Wallenberg syndrome or lateral medullary syndrome. They are typically caused by a proximal vertebral artery occlusion. Now many nuclei are affected and you can see them all here. This includes the spinothalamic tract and its spinal trigeminal nucleus, the nucleus solitarius and ambiguous of the vagal nerve, the descending sympathetic tract, and the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Now, what would you expect if each of these nuclei are actually lesioned? So I won't necessarily go through every single detail, but you can see with vestibular nuclei, you would expect things like vertigo and vomiting. Spinothalamic tract, we would look at contralateral loss of pain and temperature from the body. Now, opposed to this with the spinal trigeminal nucleus, what you will see is ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature and in the face instead of the body. With the nucleus solitarius, you will see a decreased gag reflex. You'd see Horner syndrome if you're affecting the sympathetic tract. Uh, with the inferior cerebellar peduncle, you could expect to see ipsilateral ataxia. And with the nucleus ambiguous, you'd see hoarseness. One really good clue that you should look for is hoarseness which is related to the nucleus ambiguous. Now this symptom will actually help you pick out lateral medullary syndrome as it is a stroke specific to the pica and so you won't really get it with a medial medullary syndrome. Now the anterior inferior cerebellar artery or ICA also supplies many territories. You can see it right here. Um, and strokes here can cause many symptoms. Areas affected include, as you can see, the vestibular nucleus, the spinothalamic tract, the dorsal cochlear nucleus, outputs from cranial nerve 7 and cranial nerve 8, the middle cerebellar peduncle, and part of the cerebellar hemisphere. So what sort of symptoms would you see uh, if you have lesions in these regions that are listed here? So again, with the vestibular nerve and the nucleus, you're always looking at vertigo, nystagmus, vomiting, cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve, right? So you would expect facial paralysis, reduced acclimation, salivation, taste, etc. With the spinothalamic tract, again, we're looking at contralateral loss of pain and temperature in the body, ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature in the face. We talked about sympathetic fibers. Again, here you're going to see Horner syndrome. 
With the middle cerebellar peduncle and cerebral hemisphere, you see ipsilateral ataxia. And with the labyrinth artery, you'd see some sensory neural hearing loss ipsilaterally, as well as some vertigo. Again, here, you don't see hoarseness. Again, helping us really start to differentiate which symptoms might point us in the direction of, you know, pica lesion versus ica. A stroke in the basal artery can be very scary. As you can see, it's a big artery. It'll take out the pons, the medulla, the lower midbrain, the corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts, and the paramedian pontine reticular formation. So that's a lot. And it's no wonder then that a lesion here leads to what we refer to as locked in syndrome. Locked in syndrome is precisely what its name implies. The patient is unable to move. This is not a coma, however, because they retain consciousness and can communicate through blinking. So that's something that you might see on a vignette. The upper part of the midbrain is spared, which contains the nuclei that control ocular movements. And this is why sort of they're still able to blink. Now, for step one, the PCA is actually relatively simple. You can see it here, the posterior cerebral artery. Now, this goes to the occipital lobe. And so you have loss of vision. And that will happen contralaterally. It's a hemianopsia with macular sparing. Okay, now it's time for a flash quiz. And this one says, where are the effects of strokes of the MCA and ACA felt? So just generally, in the MCA, you will see strokes that affect the face and upper limbs. If you have an ACA lesion, that will affect the lower limbs. Just to remind you, you can see the homunculus here. The region of the ACA basically is that kind of trunk and lower limb region. Whereas the MCA, you get the upper arm and the face. And that is the same for both motor and sensory cortex. Now let's do a test yourself question. A 74-year-old woman presents with weakness and hyperreflexia of the right arm and leg. Vibratory sensation and proprioception are lost in these areas as well, whereas pinprick and temperature sensation are spared. She does not have facial weakness, but her tongue deviates to the left. Which of the following vessels is most likely involved? Okay, so the answer here is B, anterior spinal artery. So the first thing that you should be able to do is figure out which syndrome the patient has. In this case, it would be a medial medullary syndrome. There will likely be questions on exam day that require you to figure out where a patient's stroke is based on a constellation of symptoms. In this case, you should know that contralateral weakness in an upper motor neuron pattern Loss of proprioception and vibration below the neck and tongue deviation are all signs of medial medullary syndrome. At that point, all you need to do is figure out which vessel usually causes medial medullary syndrome. None of the other choices cause this syndrome. Now, another commonly tested syndrome is Wallenberg or lateral medullary syndrome. This is caused by a stroke in the pica. We see that here. The symptoms here include ataxia, vertigo, hoarseness, remember that, loss of pain and temperature in the ipsilateral face and contralateral trunk, as well as a Horner syndrome. A stroke in the ACA would lead to visual defects. And lastly, a stroke in the MCA would cause sensory loss and weakness in the contralateral upper extremity and face.